Hi guys, this is Pastor Tim Williams, lead pastor at City Church of the Treasure Coast. We're so glad you've decided to join us tonight and that we can come into your homes for seven on the seven. It's our nightly time in God's word, a nightly time of encouragement and a nightly point of contact because we are reaching out to touch you and for you to touch us back during this time when many have been quarantined and many are in fear. Now, several nights ago, I shared John 16, 33 that says this, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Jesus says, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And the last time I was with you, after Jesus spending an entire night in prayer, he comes out to the disciples that are in a boat, and they're in a storm. In fact, the word said in Matthew chapter 14 that the waves were battering the boat. And we talked about the waves of media reports and the waves of medical crisis, the waves of financial peril that we're going through as the stock market is going down every day. And we said that Jesus is walking towards us through these waves, that Jesus is coming to meet us right where we are. So today, let's take a look at how the disciples react to Jesus coming to find them. First of all, in scripture, it's amazing because it mentions that Jesus is walking on the water like it's just an everyday thing. And we want you to understand during this time, miracles still happen. The word of God is telling us today that there is a miracle for you. In fact, you're going to experience favor and a reward and a miracle so often in your life that it won't even seem like it's something out of the ordinary. And we need to pray for a supernatural solution to this pandemic. We need to pray for a supernatural solution to what we're going through because I have news for you. If God is not in the midst of this, we're not going to figure our own way out of it. This crisis has taught us that, that we have to rely on God. We got to be smart. We got to follow wisdom, but ultimately we have to trust God. So let's see if the disciples do that. Jesus is walking on the waters. Now, if I was in a storm, if my boat was getting ripped apart, I'd be pretty excited about seeing Jesus come. But here's what happens when uh, they see Jesus come. It says the disciples do this. They are filled with fear. Verse 26. When the disciples saw Jesus walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Last time we were together, we said, listen, Jesus is on the way. He's going to move mountains. He's going to walk on the water. How do we react when God, when Jesus walks into our life? Well, the disciples that were closest to him did this. They got scared. I mean, they weren't, they weren't as scared of the waves as they were of Jesus showing up that they are now having to let go of control, that they are now having to recognize that God is moving. You know, I had a friend that was an amazing musician that had an opportunity to go and use their gift all over the world to touch millions, and he got scared, and he said, I'm not going to go. I'm too scared to step out. And what, I, what we want to say to you today, our staff, don't ever let fear keep you from Jesus. Don't ever let fear keep you from a miracle. Jesus is so loving. He sees the disciples' fear and he says to them this, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. I want to stop and take note again. Jesus is walking on the water as he says this. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And we see this, that Jesus overcomes every impossibility and that he even knows that we're scared and encourages us. That's why we're doing seven on the seven. We want you to know in your fear. We want you to know in your dismay, in your sickness, in your challenge, in your quarantine. And remember, Jesus quarantined himself to pray all night. We want you to know in the midst of all of that, that Jesus overcomes it all. Look at Job 9, 8. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. Jesus overcomes any obstacle. And in this case, he even overcomes the laws of nature Gravity, the law of sinkability, I don't know what it's called. He overcomes it all. And, and you and I, as people, would sink in that water. But if God's spirit is in you, and if you have surrendered your life to him, then you have the same power, the same ability that God has. Listen, you may feel like you're drowning today. I want you to know the Holy Spirit is your life preserver. And he will not only keep you from drowning, he will raise you up 
to walk on the water. Maybe it'll be like that poem we look at all the time. I looked back and there was only one set of footprints. Maybe you'll look back and you'll see Jesus is the one doing the walking, but he's carrying you today. Don't look down at the waves. Don't look down at the impossibility. Don't look down at sudden drowning or sudden death. Look up. Your deliverance is on the way. You can walk on the water because Jesus walks on the water. We've got to believe that today. And so I'm going to talk to you uh, in the days to come about what happens, what Peter does, and what the rest of the guys do. But I want to leave you with this scripture verse before we pray together. I have Pastor Alex's Bible right here. I'm blessed to have it on me today. And it says in Psalm 94, uh, 19, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Church, we've got to be willing to get out of the boat. We got to be willing to trust God when he comes. And in the midst of great anxiety, allow him to console, bring healing, and then let it bring forth joy. We know you're hurting. We know you're afraid. We know many of you have so many questions. We've got the same questions. The great thing is that even though we might not know the exact numeric quotient or answer that we want in this moment, we know the one who holds it all, knows it all, made it all. He saved us all. And so today, we can take heart that we know that God is still there. He still cares, and he still loves us. Let's pray tonight, and moms and dads, kids, teenagers, I'm going to ask you to stretch out your hand wherever you're at. Stretch out your hand with me, because maybe we can't touch physically anymore, but we can touch uh, through the power of God's love and his spirit over this live stream, over this video shoot. This, in fact, studio is a miracle that God has put together for us. And so we want you to reach out right now as we pray to close out seven on the seven, close out our time together. Will you pray with me? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord, today as we come to you and lay everything at your feet, many of us are sinking, many of us are drowning, many of us have even ingested the salt water of this world, the hurts and the habits and the hangups. And today, Lord, we pray that we would recognize it is you. We pray that we would cry out and that you would not only encourage us with your word, but you would pick us up and lift us up and breathe life back into us, bring us back to life. And then, Lord, help us to walk on the water. Father, we pray for those around the world that are suffering with COVID-19. We pray, Lord, that you would push back this virus in the name of Jesus, Lord. We pray for those in our community that are suffering, that have lost their job or lost wages or lost a loved one, Lord, that you would let your consolation bring forth joy out of that great pain, that what the devil meant for bad, you would bring good out of, Lord. We declare it. We join with people all over this city, all over this nation in prayer right now. And we declare, Lord, that we belong to you. And your word says, God, that you are our provider and our protector. So God, provide and protect supernaturally today. In Jesus' name we pray and agree. Amen. All right, guys, I'll be back with you or one of our staff members tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Share this with your friends. We want to encourage everybody. You know, the devil would seek to tear us apart and make it where we don't see each other anymore and where we're not gathering together. But guess what? He has lost. And so today we are encouraging you guys to press in, take the time to be with God and join us every night for 7 on the 7. God bless you. We love you. We're looking out for you. We hope to see you in a service soon. And we love you guys. God bless you.